Hi all, welcome to Force Galaxy. Hope you are doing good. So in this video, uh, I will be sharing one interview. Okay, and in this interview, uh, the questions were asked related to the Apex development and the admin part. Okay, so if you are looking for such questions, you can look to this interview here. The questions are not asked directly, but some scenarios are given, and accordingly, the uh, thinking power or the logical power of the candidate is judged. Okay, so you can take a look, and if you have any questions or any query, do let me know. Thank you. Yeah. So, can you tell me yeah. the different types of flows we have? Yeah, we have a uh, few different types of flows, which is a uh, uh, record ticket flow. We have scheduled flow. We have a uh, platform event flow. We have screen flow, and we got in. Uh, yeah, we have four, I think. So how you will going to decide which flow we should take for this requirement? Like either should we? Should yeah, yeah. If you want to like you need some user interaction, you can go for the. If you want like something like a user input, you can go with the screen flow. And if you want to do some any kind of record updates or deletes or if you want to make any callouts, you can go for the record triggers flow. And if you want to schedule any uh, uh, event, so that when we can go for the schedule event. And if you want to. Uh, Check any errors or can any event can go with the platform events. It's a complete. Okay. So how we use to debug our flows? Uh, we have a flow debugger, right? So by using that, uh, uh, we can uh, debug the flows. Okay. But debugging is more effective in Apex trigger than flows. Uh, debugging is more effective in uh, flows yeah. as compared to triggers. Apex uh, Apex trigger. Yeah. Oh, oh effective in trigger. Because as compared to step step further, so it's more easier. Yes. So how you will going to decide whether I should go with flow or I should go with trigger for this requirement? Yeah, sure. Uh, now whereas the flows are pretty advanced, so most of the tasks that we can turn in the triggers, we can go with the flows as well. But still, uh, we use triggers for uh, if you want to work with the large data sets and if, or if you want to uh, work with the uh, multi if you want to use collections, so, so we go for the triggers. Uh, or if you like a simple uh, requirement, not simple, maybe now be advanced. So uh, if the object has more flows, usually uh, uh, Salesforce doesn't uh, recommend us to use more flows on the object. Mm -hmm. If the object has uh, working on that, if you want to have requirement for any complex uh, requirement, we go with the triggers. Uh, so like that, if the, it depends on the completely requirement. If it is a simple requirement like the step-by-step -step process, you can go with the flow. Or if you are dealing with the large data sets, or if you want to use any collections, um, you get you go with the uh, triggers. And like I said, if you want to uh, if you want to do some changes with the admin as well, you prefer flow. So the Salesforce is recommending us to do most of the things in flow only than the triggers only. But it's completely different. So it depends on the requirement, mm -hmm. whatever the requirement. So yeah. Okay. That's how we choose. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, so can you explain me the security model in Salesforce? Uh, yes, uh, sure. Um, we got uh, object level security, we got field level security, we have profile level uh, security as well. Uh, it completely depends on that. If you consider the uh, object level security, we got the profiles. Uh, if you consider the field level security, we got OWD, we got uh, our sharing rules, uh, we have permission sets, all these uh, things. Uh, it depends on the requirement. So uh, we got uh, multiple ways that we can secure the data using different types of security models. Okay. So in yeah. the uh, mm -hmm. if I want to manage the record level security, mm -hmm. so what are the options we have? Mm -hmm. uh, we have uh, OWD, like organization wide default. And and we have sharing rules as well. And we can go with the permission. We can go with the permission sets. And uh, I think so. Because if you uh, if you hide the object, like if you have the if you restrict the objects, the field you can't see, right? So like that's what I'm trying. Okay, so I don't give that um, if you use it to the uh, of a particular object. So yeah, if the user can't see the object, you can go with the. So yeah, yeah so why. so yeah, that, that's yeah. why that comes under the object level only. Okay, so if a user is not having yeah, access yeah. to a object itself, then there is no use of record level, right? First yes, yeah. Okay, yeah. We have the object level security. So. Mm. Okay. Mm. So what does this mean if OWD is private? So if you OWD is private. So only that owner of the uh, owner of the record can only see that uh, record. Otherwise, they can't see because it's private. Only for the owner. Which... Okay. So what is yeah. now happening? Uh, I have done the OWD, mm -hmm. mark it as the private. Okay. And user A and user mm -hmm. B are there. But what is happening? 
user b is able to edit and read the records of user a also so what can be the possibilities and the wd is private yeah uh, main object right so we got multiple ways maybe you got the same profile okay does it have the same profile or not we have to check that and they have to check the role hierarchy as well because uh, the, the higher level of role has the high level of access so we can go with the sharing rules as well uh, we got criteria based sharing rule uh, yeah these are the things that we need to consider okay so what does this on the prof on the profile when you check the object level securities mm. so there are read write create mm. okay and view all and modify mm. all permissions are there so what are this view all and modify all mm. permission so they can see all the records and they can modify all the records that uh, in the name itself indicates the user can see uh, view the user can view the records or he can uh, modify as well okay so if the owd yeah. is private okay mm -hmm. and on the profile permission is given mm -hmm. view all and modify all okay user a and user mm -hmm. b are there so what will happen will mm -hmm. the user b uh, both the user will able to see each other's record uh, you said you got the permission sets right so if you have the permission sets yes no, of no. course they can no i am just saying only they are having the one profile same profile is there to both Okay. Okay. And on this okay. profile, the yeah. object permission is given is view all and modify all. Okay. So now okay. an O W D is private for this object. Now I want mm -hmm. to know, okay. we, are both the user able to see each other's record? Ah uh, no, I don't know because you said the O W D is private because it has the highest restrictive access. Okay, so but they can't see. But here on the object level, they yeah. are having view view all and modify all. Mm -hmm. and because of this when a user is having view all and modify mm -hmm. all it will going to override the record level access also mm -hmm. okay so uh -huh. okay yeah the owd is private so they also see. they can able to see each other's record mm -hmm. okay uh -huh. okay okay so what a user in salesforce what is user a uh, user uh how do you say that now if you user is something that uh how do you say this one you got public users you got uh no, test I... users you have yeah so, normal user what is user yeah. okay so who is able to log in in mm -hmm. salesforce right who is having the login credentials and who is assigned with a uh, profile because of which he has access mm -hmm. to different objects okay and applications based on the mm -hmm. profile who can be assigned with the role also okay so a person who is able to log in in a salesforce with the login credentials is a user okay having a profile and multiple okay. permission sets okay. okay so what is the difference between profile and permission sets a profile is something that what you can user can do or what he can access and permission sets is something that you give or extra permission to that user user so that's the difference Okay. If you want to give an extra permission to that user, uh, uh, so we can go with the permission sets. Only extra we can give. Can we restrict it using permission sets? Uh, I think so. Yeah, we can. No, we cannot restrict. Okay. So yeah. profile. If mm, okay. on profile already permission mm. is there, that is the baseline. Okay. Mm. We can only enhance mm. using okay. the permission set, but we can't restrict. If we want to restrict, then you have to do it on the profile itself. Okay. So, uh, can we delete a user from Salesforce? No, we can't delete a user. So, Salesforce is giving only a deactivate or freeze. What is the difference between both? We can't delete user and the uh, deactivate is uh, uh, something that uh, removing uh, can remove the license uh, from user to from logging. Or uh, freezing is something if an employee is or taking any maternity leave or something like that, you can uh, freeze the user for some uh, few. Okay. For some days or some months like that, yeah. Can you explain me the record types and page layouts? What are they with the use case? Uh, record types. Um, so we can uh, we can use the record types when we need something like uh, we have the pick list and if we, if we want to show the show the record, it depends on the pick list. So we can go for the record types. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, and page layouts. So page layouts is uh, something that if you want to 
page layouts, whatever the face that you want to show that particular user. So that is the uh, page layout, like, like how the page should look like. Okay. That is special. Yeah. So in how many ways we can make our field required? Uh, when while creating itself and uh, okay. uh, using epic figures, you can do the validation rule. Mm -hmm. uh, the using the flow setting. Okay. And uh, what about pay from page layouts? Yeah, from page layouts, we can remove that field so okay. he can see. So, can what see. is the difference between making a field required from the mm. page layout and making it required at mm. the time of creation? Uh, at the time of creation, like um, from the backend itself, and we so it will, it will be it will be yeah it will be required for every user, okay. but for the page layout for that particular user only you can. Okay. Is it correct? Okay. And what if? Uh, yes. And mm. what if? Uh, I have written a code, okay, mm. in which mm. I am inserting a record, okay. So, uh, okay, okay, yeah. So, in this case, first time when I execute mm. my code, what will happen if the field is required from page layout? Will my code execute successfully without that field? And the second case is if it is required from the backend, that is when we have created the field. So, will it execute the code mm. without this field? What will happen in both these cases? Oh, no, in both, no. Uh, if you put the required from the backend, it will definitely you can't insert. Okay. But from the page layout, I think you can. Yes, we can insert it. Okay. Yeah. And in the yeah. API callouts and all also. Yeah. It, we can able to insert. Yeah. It will only be required from the UI. Mm. If a user is creating a record from UI, mm. then it will be only required. Okay. Mm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So can you tell me what are custom settings? Uh, custom settings. Um, It's like a custom metadata, and if you want to do some uh, any changes, we can go with the custom settings that we don't have in the Salesforce uh, depositing file. Right? So custom setting is also like a custom object where we can create different types of fields. Okay, but yeah, they are not completely similar to object. Okay, objects have many uh, things with them, but with the custom settings, there are the uh, minor things which we can do. Like suppose if I want to manage my data based on the profile or based on users. Okay or some repetitive uh, yeah. data is there, then I can add it to the custom settings, okay? With making the different okay. custom fields. Okay, so, okay, tell me about the best practices to write a trigger. To write a trigger, yes, always bulkify. The first best practice is always like bulkifying the trigger, um, mm -hmm. bulk, bulkify the code, and you have to write only one object, uh, uh, one trigger per one object, and don't use uh, DML or SOPL queries inside the loop, and you better always use your trigger handlers, write the logic separately. Um, yeah, these are the just use best practices. Okay. Uh, do you know, uh, have you ever faced the read-only error in say your triggers? No, uh, read-only, no, I have No, I didn't. Okay. Okay, so this error we usually faced in the after triggers. Okay, in the after trigger, what happens? The data which we are getting is the read only is in read only state. Okay, we can only read it. We cannot directly perform the DMS to update update it. Okay, so if we try to do so, then we will going to get the read only error from the error name itself. You can guess that it is the read only means we can only read the data, but we cannot directly perform or modify it. Okay using the DMS. Okay. So how we can avoid this? We need to create a new instance and then to this new instance we use to provide the IDs of a particular record and then we can able to modify the data. Okay. Okay. This is the read only error. Okay. So do we have before and delete? No, we don't have. Why? We have only uh, after and delete. Before and delete it doesn't show Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like undelete before. Yeah, I think we have only after undelete. We yeah, undelete this, so there is no point of like before undelete. So your data is not yet in Salesforce. Okay, yeah. data is not yet yeah. Yeah. Uh, committed to the Salesforce. Okay, so if yeah. the data is not yet committed, then there is no use of making it undelete. Okay, on which record we yeah. were going to perform this action. So for this action, data should mm. be first committed to Salesforce, then only we can perform undelete, mm. which can be done in the after ones. Mm. So after are the ones on which we perform mm. the changes or the modification once it is committed to the database. Okay.
Okay, what is batch apex? Uh, batch apex, if you want to deal with the large data sets, you can go for the batch apex. And you got three methods in the batch apex, which is start, execute, and finish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to perform any action uh, by dealing with the large data sets, like hundreds of thousands of records, uh, you can go with only batch apex. It is a part of asynchronous apex. What interface we use in batch apex? Data is Babel. Can we call one batch from another? Yes, we can, but we can call it from the finish method. Okay, what if I try to call it from exe uh, execute or the start method? Uh, you will get uh, error from that because can't call, can't do it because the start method is like if we write the queries we get the we retrieve the data in the start method and in the execute method we write the main logic and when we are running the main logic there is no point of calling another batch because if you want to run any batch of x you have to uh, uh, do with all these three things start execute and finish once one batch is finished we can call with the another batch so that's how it works Okay, and if I want to call a normal yeah. class from batch apex? Normal? No, normal class. Okay, apex class. Another apex class I want to call. From batch uh, yeah, I think we can. We can. From, if we are, whatever, if you want any call, you can uh, call from the finish only. Okay. Like post processing. Yeah. Okay, can we make call outs from trigger? Mm, yes, we can make call outs. Database not allow callers by using uh, from triggers. Hello? From triggers. From triggers, I think we can. Okay. So have you ever made call out from yeah. trigger? No, no, I didn't. Okay, so we cannot directly make call outs from trigger. Okay. Because trigger runs mm -hmm. synchronously. Okay. okay, synchronously means mm -hmm. here it knows about the uh, uh, yeah. response also. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But okay. in the callouts, we are not uh, aware about the response time, okay, how long it will going to take, mm. okay, and synchronous things cannot wait, okay, it will going to give you the error. So what we will do, we will so we have to use asynchronously, we will going to run it asynchronously, yeah. callout part in a separate thread that is using the future methods. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah, yeah. I got it. Okay. What type of parameters we usually pass in future methods? Uh, we cannot pass as objects. We can pass only uh, IDs or why we, we can pass only pass, types. We cannot pass non primitive. Why we can't pass as because yeah, because it runs yeah, yeah because it runs asynchronously, right? So it runs in the background. Mm. So, so if you pass like as objects or something, like this might change into that uh, uh, code. So we can pass only. We cannot pass like that. So okay. Okay, so what is the difference between database dot uh, uh, insert update DMS? Okay, database DMS and the simple DMS. Excuse me. DMS, uh, for example, if you perform update, mm. right? Uh, if you want to update uh, 100 records, okay, if some error occurs at uh, for get record, what will happen is the transaction, I mean, the update will fail. But if you use database dot insert or database dot update, even though one record fails. Okay, uh, the other records will all, all be possible and uh, we can uh, up, update later, we can reuse it. So it won't fail because it's already saving into the database. So uh, which is better? We should go with, uh, always go with simple DMS or we should go with database DMS? Always better to go with the database. So it, 100%. okay, so then it comes under the best yeah. practices, right? Yeah. Okay.